Okay, so this is a video about second order differential equations. We're going to look at um, this kind of form of differential equation today. So, um, just to explain that, it's second order differential equations because of this term here, the d2y dx squared. Uh, that's the second differential of y. That's the highest differential of y in your equation. That makes it a second order differential equation. Um, here, the a, b, and c are um, standings for constants, for numbers. Um, so here's some examples of the kind of equations we want to solve. Um, for example, here A is 1 and B is minus 5 and C is, is minus 6. Um, the ones we're looking at today are going to be equal to 0. Ones in future videos will be uh, equal to functions of X, but we'll deal with those later. So this is kind of the simplest second order equation you can get. Um, here's some examples of the things we want to solve by the end of the video. Um, so we've got one here, another one here. Here the, uh, the B and C is changed. Basically, that's the only difference between them is that you can change the values A, B, and C. In this case, A is always 1. That's not always the case. In some of the uh, questions you have to do, you'll have um, situations where A is 2 or 3 or, or you know, whatever. Um, but these are simpler for our purposes today. And we'll try to find a, a solution at the end, which is a, a function of Y in terms of X, or so like Y equals something in terms of X. Um, before we solve these ones, we're going to go through kind of the uh, the background or some of the um, explanation of how the solutions works. Um, it is quite long and it's possibly quite confusing. So you're going to need to give me about three or four minutes to explain that well. Uh, and then we're going to go through the examples. And by the end of all that, we should have said we're doing. But there might be a bit in the middle where you're confused. So if you do get confused, just bear with me. Hopefully it will come clear uh, later on in the video. So uh, let's start by going through this general solution um, in as much general terms as possible. So the way we solve this thing up here in general is by uh, letting y equal e to the mx, where m is some unknown number that we're going to try and work out. Um, we then differentiate it. So differential of e to the mx is still e to the x, but you have times by the differential of mx, which is going to be m. And then we do that again. And so we end up times by an m again and get m squared. Once we've done that, we uh, plug this back into this equation up here. So we're doing a and d2y dx squared is this thing, so m squared e to the mx. We do plus b, uh, dy dx is m e to the mx. And c here, and then y is just e to the mx. Once we've done that, we can see that actually e to the mx is in every term, so we could take that out as a factor. In fact, um, exponential is always positive, so we could divide through by it, because dividing through something that's non-zero is okay. Oh, sorry, then back it. Get rid of that. We have a m squared plus b m plus c is equal to zero. So by doing the substitution and plugging it in, we've managed to take this thing here and uh, arrange it into actually what is a, a quadratic equation in terms of m. So we can solve this. If we know a, b, and c, where well, we can solve it. Um, we could use uh, factorization or completing the square or even the formulas I'm writing out now. Hopefully writing this out correctly. Over 2a. So once we know a, b, and c, we can find the values of m. And we'll be in one of three cases, right? So for C1, we know that either this, this is positive, this discriminant here is positive, we know that we'll have uh, two different roots, two values, possible values for M. Uh, if this is zero, we know we've got a situation where we've got one root, or a repeated root. Or maybe it's a situation where this discriminant here is negative, and we've got um, M equal to uh, two complex conjugates also p plus or minus qi. Uh, p and q are, are just numbers, uh, the real and imaginary parts. Uh, I'm using p and q rather than know, a or b or something, it's because I've used a and b up here, and p and q is the, the letters the book uses, so nice to be consistent. Here we've got two complex conjugate roots. So that's one of the three cases we're going to be in. And depending on which case you get, depends on how you write your y. So if in the first case, your solution for y is y is equal to a e to the m1x plus b e to the m2x. Okay, we start out with y being equal to mx, and so we've kind of got both parts, the m1 bit and the m2 bit put together. a and b are 
a known constant. This is a, this is a general solution. A bit like how when you solve by integrating, you get a plus c at the end. You don't know what it is. These a and b are quite similar to that. If we were in the repeated root section, we'd get y is equal to a plus uh, bx, uh, e to the mx. So you kind of might expect the e to the mx bit, but this bx bit here is a bit weird. Um, I'm not really going to go into why that exists quite yet. And say we're in a situation where we were... Um, keep twisting this paper. Uh, say we're in a situation where we were um, looking at two complex conjugates, then we'd get a solution e to the real part, p x and then in the bracket we have uh, a cos the imaginary part qx uh, plus b sine uh, the imaginary part qx now this is normally the point where it starts getting really confusing you sort of maybe follow me what i'm doing here don't really know why but okay it still makes sense and here see this comes out of nowhere um these cos and sines come from the fact that if you've got an imaginary bit and you're doing e to the imaginary number um, e to the ix is cos x plus i sine x that's where the sine cos come from and if you really want to understand what's going on here we can explain it to you it's 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 not too hard it's not easy but it's not hard um, but we don't need to these these solutions here you can remember them you can basically solve any second order differential equation so most of the time it's going to come down to just using these now to show what i mean let's actually do some of these questions because without doing that it's going to be a bit confusing okay so let's try uh, the first one so we've got uh, up here we've got d2y dx squared minus 5 dy dx minus 6y is equal to zero. Um, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use this uh, y is equal to e to the mx. We're going to substitute those into here. So this is very similar to what we've got on this side of the paper here. Just this time, I know what a, b, and c are. So we've got m squared e to the mx minus five m e to the mx minus six e m the sorry m e to the mx. Get myself confused here. Uh, now we can divide and get rid of this e to the mx because it's non-zero. So we end up with m squared here, minus 5m, minus 6 equals 0. So just the same as we had here, but this time we know what a, b, and c are, right? And now we can think, oh, is this a, can I factorise this? Uh, can I use complete the square? Can I do I have to use a formula? And I think actually I can find two numbers at times to give to give minus 6 and add to give minus 5. Um, so I think we can factorise this. Can you see it? Yeah, of course you can. Minus 6 plus 1 would work. So that means my two roots are 6 and minus 1. So this is like my first root, this is my second root. 6 and 1. So I'm in this situation with two real roots, which means I need to use this solution. So my solution for giving this solution in terms of y would be y is equal to a e to the m1, which is 6x, plus b e to the m2, which is minus 1x. And that's the solution to this equation. See, really all it is is solving a quadratic equation and remembering what solution to put it in. Oh, can we squeeze another one in there? Let's give it a go. So let's try squeezing the next one in. Uh, so we've got d2y dx squared plus 6dy dx plus 9y is equal to 0. Again, we're going to put in the m squared e to the mx by doing these substitutions over here plus 6m e to the mx plus 9 e to the mx equals 0. Cancel out the e to the mx's that occur in every term. We get this, which is that bit there, but written with the particular a, b and c values this time. We can factorise this one, I think. I think it's uh, plus 3 twice. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So that means I've got m is equal to minus 3, and this is actually, you know, a single repeated root. So it's this type here, which means I can write it using this form, y is equal to a plus bx, and then we've got e to the minus 3x, and that is the solution to this one. So you see, once you find out your roots, you look here and you choose which one you want. We've got one more to do, let's do a different bit of paper. Right, so now we're going to do uh, the last one, which is d2y dx squared minus 4dy dx. 
plus 13y is equal to 0. Okay, so we do the same thing. We use our substitution. Just like before, we cancel out the, the mx. You might get sick of that. Maybe you'll see a faster way of getting from here to this line. And then here we have to think, can we factorise that? Mm, 1 and 13 doesn't give minus 4 anyway, does it? So I think uh, we'll, we're stuck with using the formula here. So minus b, b squared minus 4a is 1, c is 13, all over 2 times 1. Okay, keep going. Uh, we've got 4 over 2 plus or minus uh, 16. 4 times 13 is 52. Back out, isn't it? Uh, and then we can do 4 over 2 is 2. 16 minus 52 is minus 36. Okay, uh, the minus sign is going to become an i. Square root of minus 1 is i. Square root of 36 is 6. And then finally, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So if you compare this to, oh, sorry. If you compare this over to here, we can see that we're in a situation where we've got two complex conjugates. In fact, P and Q are these numbers here, 2 and 3. This is P, and this is Q. So P is 2 and Q is 3. No more about the sign for Q. It's always just a positive sign. P could be positive or negative. We need to use this one here. So our solution for this particular differential equation is Y is equal to e to the p, which is 2. a is always unknown, cos 3x plus b sine 3x, because 3 is what the q is, and that's the solution to that one. We've now worked out the solution to that equation there. So you see, it's not too bad. I mean, it's a bit strange. I mean, that's the, the thing to get your head around. But really, all you're doing is taking this differential equation, you turn it into a quadratic equation, you're solving it, which is really what GCC grade stuff. And then um, once you've done that, you've got to write it in this form. So if you can learn these forms, then it's very simple. Uh, if you're interested in where these have come from and how we got from here to here with all this uh, other stuff that's going on earlier in the video, then please ask. I mean, it's not too bad, but um, you don't require it, should we say, for, um, for getting through your FP2 exam. So it's not an absolute must. Uh, good luck with uh, solving some of these... Uh, second order differential equations which are equal to zero.